Welcome back to the Secret Underground Lair. Today we are working on the drawers. So we're going to cut the uh, side pieces, 13 and 7 8 so I have a little stack of raw side bits here that I'll just kind of work through. And then we're going to cut the fronts and the backs. Alright, so I'll just uh, put you on a little montage here while I cut these sides. That's today's adventure, drawers. center back, center front, center side, center side, left drawer back, left drawer front, etc, etc. So I'm just going to set these pieces off to the side for the time being. And I'm going to use some of these cutoffs. I'm going to use these cutoffs and make some uh, test fits on the dados. So hopefully we'll just need one pair and we'll get it down perfect. Just thought I'd take a second to show you the dado blade that I'm using. Yeah, and a little confession too about how long I've had these tools. So this is the little dado blade that I've got. It came from Sears back when they were a thing. So this is probably at least 30 years old. Um, I have another dado blade that's a, a 10 inch blade that I use from time to time. But I do like this one because it's got a fairly uh, simple way to make an adjustment. So you can see here, there are a number of, on the black surface, a number of indicators for the size of the blade, or size of the, that we're gonna take out of the stack. And <clears throat> simply by twisting this dial, you can adjust it to a different width. So I'm gonna set this to be at a half inch, and what I have observed in the past is that when set to half an inch, oh no, I can't find my half inch mark. It's a problem, getting old, I can't read it. There we are, okay. A little easier to see them on this side. I think I brushed them off at one point. So I'm gonna set it to half an inch, and what I have observed is when it's set to half an inch, it is exactly half an inch. And that represents a fit that's a little too snug for a dado, um, like a finger joint in particular. So I am moving the dado blade just a little beyond that half inch mark. And I don't know if you can see that very well. So you can see the half inch mark here. And I'm moving the dado stack to be just a little bit beyond that to give a, a smoother fit for a glue joint. So put that on and then we'll do some test fits with the material that I've got here on the saw. All right, we're ready to make these uh, dado cuts. So I'm gonna just do two pieces, a mating pair, this piece here on the saw and that piece over there just laying, laying down, that'll be the mating piece. So we'll just make that one joint. We'll do a test fit, see how it works.
So a small problem right out of the gate, what I just realized is that the little uh, tongue here that I've got is three quarters of an inch thick and it should be half an inch. Um, so I'm going to take that out, get them down to size, and then we'll uh, come right back. All right, got that figured out. Start again. This side will be moot. That joint goes together exceedingly well. Just, it's a uh, not a loose fit. It's just snug enough, and we've got uh, the pieces just sitting proud, ever so slightly. Bring in for a closer look. So you can see our pieces are just. Slightly proud. That's uh, perfect. That's probably about a 32nd of an inch. Which would account for the 16th of an inch that we cut them oversized. So that will be perfect. Also, uh, just a note that on this edge, we are flush. Just wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to take the um, actual drawer components and do a lot of data wing. Cue the montage. Before I go doing all these dados, I have made an observation. Looking at the piece that I cut here, you can see that I have a little bit of tear out here and a little bit of tear out here and, and here even more. And the reason for that tear out is this hole here. So this hole here was uh, cut when we were doing a three-quarter inch uh, tenon. So that leaves an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch gap between the top of that hole and the uh, top of the surface of the data that we're trying, top of the data we're trying to cut. And the blade then has an opportunity with nothing behind it to rip away a little bit up to that quarter inch mark. So that's, that's what that tear out there is all about. So I'm gonna make a new little backer board just from one of our off cuts here. That'll be exactly the height of the dado and that'll eliminate the tear out. Now you may be wondering, how am I going to reposition this thing to get in the right spot? The answer is quite simple. I have backer here. Placing that on there, screwing that in, we're in exactly the right spot. So I'm just going to drill two holes, countersink and put these screws back in, and we're all set to go. So I'm going to put a hole with the countersink here and here. It, ama it is amazing how much of a making of a piece of furniture is actually tooling, making tools and jigs. Of course, the reason this needs to be countersunk is because there's a piece of wood that sits up against this, you know, the, the piece that's actually getting the dado. So I can't have any screw obstructing the movement of the piece. And 
we're good. We got, that's a perfect half inch there, so we're not gonna get any tear out like we were getting with uh, the old piece. The old piece being here. So that little, the difference there of a quarter of an inch results in a lot of tear out. Now gone. Okay, set you back up and away we go with the dados. with the dado blade yet because what I want to do is cut a quarter of an inch I'm not sure if it's going to be a groove or a rabbit thinking about that to accommodate the bottom of the drawer I'm kind of thinking a groove it's a little nicer fit I think so let me get the uh, pieces set up for that uh, bring in a piece of quarter inch material so that we can do a test fit change the width of the dado blade this will be a fence operation. Just thought I'd show you a quick look at uh, a drawer assembled now with those dados cut. That's what, just a loose fit. There's no clamps put on it or anything. And you can see that the joints are just really tight, neat. Really like it. So, next drawer bottoms. All right, I just set up the dado uh, to be a quarter inch width, a quarter inch high, and ran a little test cut through it. So that's the dado that we're looking for. Here is our quarter inch material. And that dado just slips on there very nicely. It has a little bit of give to it, which is what I want. I want a little more give on this than I did on the um, uh, box tail joints or the box finger joints because uh, this has uh, needs a little extra room to expand and contract with the humidity, moisture and stuff. Not so much a problem since everything in this piece is built out of MDF, but uh, I still wanna have a little bit of flexibility in that joint. <laughs> the drawer bottom is actually not gonna be glued into place. It's just gonna be floating in there. Okay. Um, now I need to make all the cuts in our sides. And of course I have to make sure, don't wanna screw this up, that we have the pieces oriented the right way so that all the slots are on the bottom inside. So I'm gonna take a minute, think about that carefully, and then mark everything out. Back in a second. <clears throat> So I figured the best way to make sure that I get everything marked on the right, in the right spot to cut that dado is just assemble them. So they're just, drawers are just uh, loosely fit together. But now I can just take a pencil and mark the edge where I want that dado. This is the bottom inside. It's a loose mark, but. I 
there's no mistaking where that data is going to be. So that's simply the pencil mark that I put on there. So I know that that line needs to be face down against the fence on every piece. And we got it all cut in the right spot. So you may notice that I like to be a little methodical when I can. I'm not always methodical, but sometimes I like to be, and if I can, I will. So I'm setting, every, setting everything down in the same orientation on this side of my fence. When I pick a piece up, I can see the line, and I know I take that piece, flip it over and run it through. Pick up the next piece, same line is right there, pick, turn it over, run it through. Turn it over, pick it up, turn it over, run it through. Pick it up, turn it over, run it through. So there's no mistake about what, uh, what I'm doing with each piece. As long as I have everything oriented the same way, I don't have to think too much about running it through the saw. There we are, a dado cut in every piece. I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just get rid of the uh, any tarot or roughness associated with that. And what I'm doing is I'm taking my little sanding block and just kind of holding it at 45 degrees, running it through the slot, and that just takes off the edge on both sides of the dado. Doesn't take much, again, with MDF. Done. Now we'll get the uh, drawer bottoms cut to size. Again, the center is going to be a sixteenth of an inch bigger than the two side ones, but just keep that in mind. So I'm cutting this uh, quarter inch stock. It's a two foot by four foot piece into two 11 inch uh, strips. Then we'll cut it down into the final dimension when it's a little smaller and easier to manage. I'm going to do a test fit of that uh, drawer bottom. I'm going to take a sixteenth off the length. I'm going to start with a sixteenth off the width. the drawer. Just get the bottom drawers, or the bottoms for the other two drawers. <clears throat> this will probably be a similar process where I'm just going to go uh, bit by bit to get an exact fit. I'll bring you back when I have them ready. And there are the three drawers. All set to go. Ready for glue up. But for now, time for a bite of lunch. Come back and get these glued together. And then I think we're on to final glue up of the entire assembly. So here are the pieces of our sideboard, with the exception of the drawer fronts and the doors themselves. So we got our three drawers, our top and uh, bottom shelves, the back, partition, two sides, two drawer dividers. Time to glue it all together. So we're going to start by gluing up the drawers. That's what we just finished uh, this morning. And then we'll assemble the cabinet at large. Got my plastic down on top of the table to kind of keep the glue off that as much as possible. And I've got a couple of uh, square clamps for doing a box. 
Not that I'm looking to apply any clamping pressure with those per se, I just want to make sure they're, they're square. And then I'll grab some clamps off the rack here, just to kind of pull everything together tight. Okay, I'm going to set that to the side for a couple minutes. Okay, we got our uh, drawers all glued together. Now let's move on to the major cabinet. All right, I brought you over for a slightly different perspective because I'm going to work on this side on assembling the top. So I'm going to start by putting in the top shelf, then putting in the partition. And the reason I want to do that is because that will get everything uh, uh, lined up and square. Then I can put the ends on. I've got some pipe clamps laid over there, ready to go. So, here it is. Showtime. There we are. They're assembled. There's going to be a little bit of adjustment. A little tiny bit proud there. Flush. 
flush. A little proud there. We're okay. Good, 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 good. Just the partition's a little bit off. Just a little smidgen off. That was a bit of a challenge. Now, I'm not going to put on these two guys yet because I want to have uh, this set and then I'm going to clamp those in. So we'll come back and do those tomorrow. Oh, a little bit of a battle with this one though. Dry fit was perfect. But the uh, minute you introduce glue <laughs> and, and panic because you got to get it all in there before the glue sets. Uh, another set of challenges. Anyway, there we are. Piece is all clamped up, glued. The drawers are uh, now ready to go. And that's how it's going to look when we're all done. Doors in. By and large, that's how we're going to go. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next video.